What's going on, guys? Welcome to the third episode of Property is a Game of Finance. We are joined again by Onus from Window Property Group. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his journey, how he got to where he is today. You probably recognize him from the previous episode. Um, so all the thousands of people that watched the last one are probably watching yeah. this one too, man. So your socials have already probably blown up. Yeah. So how are you handling that? <laughs> oh, look, mate, it's just DMs coming in left, right and center, man. It's gone crazy. That's good, man. Um, well, thanks for coming in again. Thanks for having me. No dramas, mate. So I wanted to, um, we've, we've done a couple podcasts together now talking a little bit about, you know, we had Tracy on, we spoke sure. a lot about me. We yeah. didn't talk much about you. So I got, I kind of want to understand what it is that got you into property, your history, but leading up to that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm an electrical engineer by trade. Did you go to uni for that? Yeah. I, How long? I, I did. So I went to uni for about five, five, actually six years. Mate, I barely went to high school. I don't Look know if I could go yeah. to uni. <laughs> yeah, so I was in university um, for about six years. Um so it was actually, um, it was about a five year course and um, I started working. So I did some subjects part time. So it took me six years. Um, and uh, I started working for the CSIRO. That was my first technical role. And from that, I got into the construction industry as a project coordinator starting out and then a project manager. So managing the electrical side of, um, Buildings, res, uh, high density residential buildings. So yep. all of those skyscraper properties or towers you see. So for example, um, Opal Towers and um, your bad example. Um, you didn't have anything to do with that, did you? I wasn't on that project, <laughs> for, fortunately. But um, so so like essentially those bigger projects like that, yep. um, I would work on and manage the electrical side of um, things. So uh, coming back to your question, um, what got me into property? Well, I guess it's always that um, inkling or, or that, first, that, that, that first kind of book or, um, or that kind of ex existential kind of um, crisis, for example. Like you start questioning things and, and you start trying to understand things better or at least on a deeper level. So I kind of went through that rabbit hole and, um, you know, uh, one of the OGs, Robert Kiyosaki, so Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's the first book I read too. Yeah. I didn't even read books in uh, year 11 and 12 English, mate, but there Robert Kiyosaki, that was my first book. <laughs> on it straight away, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I started reading books like like that. So um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. Um, and a whole bunch of books like Noam uh, Chomsky, uh, how uh, how the the world works, right? So then I kind of went down this rabbit hole and kind of understood that there's a bit more to life than what readily meets the eye. Working a nine to five and all that kind of stuff, and um, I found property as an avenue to kind of achieve my goals and help people achieve theirs too. So there's a saying that I try to live by and it's you can have anything you want in life as, as long as you help uh, so many people. So you can achieve anything you want, but you need to help as many people as you can to have that thing that mm. you want. Yeah. So um, so um, that became gospel for me. Um, it's in my journal somewhere. Um and then, yeah, so uh, that's why I became a buyer's agent because I just understood the importance of financial literacy and financial freedom and um, being able to create options for yourself Yeah, and um, achieving that through property. Yeah. So six years in uni, man, and then how long were you in the workforce until you decided to go out and work for yourself? Yeah, so I was working for about four years. Yep. How old are you now? I'm 28. Oh, nice. Yes, I'm yeah, some twenty seven. Yeah. So, um, where where'd you grow up, man? I grew up in Liverpool. Yeah, I know, I know. Just Two like, one seven one. I like that, mate. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Now we're LP. living in the living in roads. We both live in roads. Yeah. It's funny because we met in a um, buyers agent group, That's and right, I yeah. think I just put up a post looking for buyers agents to to build referral partners with, and this guy just calls me straight up on Facebook. He didn't, he just no hesitation. That's right. After the first conversation, we, we kind of clicked and knew both from the hood. So it's, 
it's um we we click pretty quick so then we started doing some deals together now we're in the same OzTag team but yeah right. big, bigger <laughs> better things to come in that's right so went, grew up in liverpool went to uni for six years in the workforce for four years so that that transition from when you first started you know educating yourself reading books and it was was it always towards property or were you looking towards business or was it just straight away as soon as you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, I was like, I want to buy property? Yeah. No, it's a good question. Um, so I tried a whole bunch of different things, man. So, so, so was like, hey, me too, don't worry. <laughs> I jumped in on Forex, man. I was looking at drop shipping. Yeah. Um, you know, I was playing around with crypto and network marketing at a stage. So um, there was just that like on, ongoing search for like what I could provide the most yeah. value in. Yeah. And um, and I kept searching. I didn't stop. And um, starting my own buyer's agency, that's that's what's fulfilling for me right what, now. What clicked that though? What made you – how did you even get introduced to what a buyer's agent is? Because a lot of people don't even know what that is. Yeah, that's right. So um, so I've got a very good friend of mine. Um, he's a buyer's agent and he actually assisted me with my first property purchase. So um, his name's Arjun. Big yeah. Arge. You know, that's episode one. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's that's um, what's up there. So, so how did you hear about him? Oh, well, me and him were mates and, um, and, he was, and he was on a similar journey to me. So I actually met Arjun at a learn to trade um, kind of seminar. So, oh, yeah. so he was looking at Forex the same time I was. And um, we kind of just bumped heads, um, added each other on Facebook and then we just hit it off from from there, really. And um, he started out as a buyer's agent um, a couple of years ago. Um, and yeah, we've we've just been mates ever since. So um, I reached out to him when when um, I was looking for my first investment, and um, he helped me out with that. And um, yeah, and then I just felt that look, this is a service a service that I can provide to people and um my close family around me um helped them with property because the common consen- consensus was there's um just invest in liverpool your backyard yeah get a flat buy this buy that but then um no one really understood that australia is a massive place you can buy commercial properties you can develop prop- properties you can flip properties you can renovate and draw out equity there's so many strategies in, in in place that the common layman and and my immediate family wasn't privy to so um i wanted to be the, be that source of education be that source of information so that people around me could you know do what they want to do through property options yeah. It's beautiful, man. So while we're, uh, when did you buy that property? That first one. That one, I believe it's 2018. I bought that one. Yeah, wh- where'd you buy it? So that was in uh, that was in Brizzy. Uh, so that's north, around North Queensland, um, north of Brisbane. Sorry, not North Queensland. Yeah. Um, so we picked that one up for about 420. Ah, oh, perfect. So yeah, and um, yeah, it's and the price now is yeah what do you way, reckon way way above that i reckon 650 and, what? and counting right Mate, now that's good stuff um yeah so like yeah so like just understanding like just the basic fundamentals of property supply and demand vacancy rates um you know infrastructure spending and like how to buy re- just really streamline that process for me and um just help me acquire that property um, yeah. So that kind of inspired you then to start your own business and, and do that for other people. Correct. It's awesome, man. Do you have another property? Look, I don't. So, it, yeah. It, so, I'll, I, yeah, I'll, I guess that's hard because once you start your own business, you've yeah. kind of got to be in business for a little bit longer to buy the next property, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so it was literally tossing up between going again or starting Window Property Group. Yeah. And it was window prop- property group 10 yeah. times out of 10. So, yeah, of course, man. So of that's course. that's where I'm at with my journey. Similar situation yeah. to Tracy, right? Like she could have went on another journey and, and took six months out of her life to buy that next property. Yeah. But what if, what if she, I know she's got other goals and she wants to get and do her own career and For maybe sure. start a new job. So 
I think that is pretty important. I mean, if you're, you're in a position to buy right now, for sure, go and do it. But if you're unsure about what you want to do in life and you start acquiring all this debt and properties, like it's a lot of responsibility. I it mean, I, I did the same thing. I was in a job that I hated. I bought two properties that, you know, I could afford at the time. Yeah. And then they, they were bad properties. I, I bought them when I was 18, 19. Yeah. I, I didn't really... I didn't have anyone mentoring me, trying to, sure. to helping me buy property, but I was in a position to buy. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, at the time I could afford them. They were both on interest only loans, yeah. but when they rolled off interest only to principal and interest, I was making the same income I was, and these interest rates were on four and five percent. There you go. And they were on principal and interest over a shorter loan term. So, yeah. I was paying out eleven fifty a week, and rental income was offsetting that, but if for whatever reason one of them went vacant or there was a repair, like that's a lot of money coming oh, out yeah, of my account, sure. right? And I couldn't even refinance because th- th- I bought units and they had dropped in value. So I bought in Campbelltown off the plan when I was 18. Yeah, That one did pretty well, but there was it's because there was no, that was one of the first ones to go up there in that area in okay. Campbelltown. Yeah. So that, before I had even settled on the property, it went up 80,000. Oh, look at that, awesome. But it hasn't gone up since then. It was eight years ago. Yeah. Because that, that particular market has just been oversupplied with units, which is yep. pretty easy to do when you buy units, right? Exactly right. And um, yeah, it was a, like, and I think I've, after that, I went on a massive journey of just educating myself, listening to podcasts about property. And yeah, it was, it was pretty funny because I, I kept hearing a, a saying, some of the podcast hosts and other buyers agents that were saying like, you know, the worst thing that could happen to you yeah. as a first time investor is to you do well because i bought at a time it was just before the market was on a run yeah and i had saw this equity for doing nothing as a 19 19 yeah. year old i thought oh you know i, I know what i'm doing here i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna do this again i'm the best you know didn't didn't get any advice just did it all for myself and two years after that i just rinse and repeat i got the equity out, bought a, a second property apartment, and it yeah. was an apartment in Warwick Farm, which is very, very close to Liverpool. Yeah. And I bought that with Pepper, Pepper Money, and they're very good for borrowing capacity, right? And at the time I could service mm. with them, but these were when rates were sitting at four and five percent. Even though even though during from from that time I bought that last property up until now, rates were continuously going down. But you think the lender passed on those discounts to me, mate? No, no <laughs> nah, chance. No chance, mate. No chance. So, and I had good credit. I was, it was a good, good like prime deal, but still, even though the interest rates were decreasing, part of me thinks they knew I couldn't refinance because I, if I was to refinance, I'd have to pay lender's mortgage insurance because that, that property that I bought the second one, that had dipped in value. I think I bought it for 540. I wouldn't be able to sell it today for uh, 450. So a hundred thousand dollars less. And I wouldn't even be able to sell it because of all the all the strata issues that are going on. There's leaks in the unit. There's combustible cladding. Like it, it was an absolute nightmare. So we didn't know at the time. I didn't know at the time. But if I had engaged with the buyer's agent, yeah. I probably wouldn't have bought a unit. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's a, a great point. And look, it's a massive learning curve for you. Um, so as soon as you get rid of that property... Um, you're going to be wiser. You're you're going to be oh, smarter. Yeah. So it's a massive learning curve. But the thing about units, and I stay away from them, especially for my clients. Um, if if they're not looking to reside in them, it's just because what appreciates in value is land, and um, buildings um, depreciate in value, right? Yeah. But then again, you do have units in good areas that that do perform well. But um, you you really need to know what you're doing and um, yeah. what kind of metrics to look at. Yeah. Generally speaking, though, my strategy is just buy a house in yeah. a nice area. It's got yeah. cap- capital growth drivers yeah. um, and a decent rental yield, and uh, you're doing well nine times out of ten. Yeah, uh, I have no no regrets because I think those experiences have molded me to be who I am today, and. You, th- you you think it's just a hundred thousand dollar loss, but it's not. It's a lot more than that. Like it's a hundred thousand dollar learning. Yeah, yeah. In you in, can look at it. But that I way. think it's a lot more than that because I go. bought it eight years ago. Well, all right, and it's a hundred thousand dollars worth a hundred thousand dollars less today, right? If I had spent the same money and bought a house in Brisbane, yeah. right, 
I would have almost doubled my money in that eight years. A hundred percent. So, yeah. and that I could have that hundred k loss is now four hundred thousand dollar, five hundred thousand dollar loss, and that's just because I didn't have the knowledge, I didn't have the people guiding me, and I made a lot of mistakes. And that's the risk you take when you enter the market with no experience and think you can do it yourself, not using a broker, not using a buyer's agent. Like that's the risk you take. If yeah, you have no sure. idea, you don't have the time to do the research, or you know, it's it's hard to find the right people to listen to because there's a lot of people out there that are just trying to make money they're not really trying to help people exactly. so yeah the hundred thousand dollar loss as of today is actually but like a lot more if you look at the the potential opportunity loss the cost. opportunity cost yeah, man it's massive yeah. so it, i i it does hurt still thinking about it but it's the reason why i'm so passionate about what i do now yeah like it's it's a massive um massive lesson yeah yeah. yeah no that's that's awesome man and um thanks for sharing that because a lot of people just don't know and they think like buying property is just getting a beer out of a fridge nearly <laughs> like you just rock up to Woolworths and yeah I'll just take that one yeah but um if you're not thinking correctly and thinking in 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 the whole um uh context of of the larger scheme of things um you can get blindsided yeah and um yeah like as you said five hundred thousand dollar loss yeah you know comparing um like the current state of the market right now yeah so it is massive and um yeah yeah and i think um another big one is People always say to me, because there is a cost of using a buyer's agent, right? There is a fee that you charge for using a buyer's agent for yeah, someone correct. to represent you to buy a property, right? Yeah, Just like sure. when you're selling your property, you would use a real estate agent, they'd take a 2% fee on the sale price correct. and that, that's that's the fee that you pay for them to get you the best price. Now, I would argue that it's easier to sell a property yourself rather than it is to buy a property, especially with the opportunity costs involved and the risks. It's yeah. a lot easier to sell a house than it is to buy a house because if you buy the wrong house, it could potentially be very detrimental to your portfolio. And yeah, like if, if you're using a buyer's agent who's relying on the data to buy this property yeah. and that property performs 1% better every year, that compounding effect is gonna more than cover your your buyer's agent fee. But it's a it's a fee that protects that it's it's like an insurance on your bet, right? Yeah, you can look at it that way. Yeah, 100%. and like I and then I have a perfect example because yeah. they'll say to me, "Oh, you know, oh, it's fifteen thousand. Oh, it's expensive." I'm like, "You know, it's expensive." And I tell them that story about how I potentially lost five hundred thousand in opportunity costs yeah. just because I went out and bought something without getting advice. Yeah. Like granted I was twenty one at the time yeah. with that second property. A loose cannon back then. Had no idea. But yeah. because I had done so well using the exact same strategy the first time, yeah. I thought that I was king shit. But the first one that hasn't gone up in value in eight years since that first couple of years of uplift. So yeah. even that, if I had sold that as soon as I had settled on it and then reinvested it into a in a house up up in Brisbane at the time. Yeah could be a, a million uh, over the two properties right and then yeah, and then during that eight year period i could have leveraged on that and got into it again and, and saw the growth of the last three years so it's a massive massive loss and if i had just changed my mindset and thought you know fifteen thousand dollars for a buyer's agent to buy in brisbane right i, I paid 540 in 2018 for a unit all right That's 540 insane. in 2018 could get you a bloody good house you oh, know can get, interstate can do a lot for you know and i just especially in 2018 i just didn't know and yeah. and it was funny because the broker at the time that i used after i had settled on the property gave me a business card to a buyer's agent well wow. after. after he's like for your next one use this little did i know it's eight years later and i still haven't got my next one Far out. <laughs> and and but that i was a bit dirty that he didn't give it to me before because okay. i did ask i said look i can't afford a house yeah. I can only afford five five forty un, like unit in in Sydney. I can't afford anything else. Yeah. Um. Because he said, yeah, you try and get a house. I was like, okay, good. But I was looking around, I couldn't do it. I didn't know what a buyer's agent was. I didn't know how easy it was to buy interstate using their services. And he could have slid that card across the table there and there. Yeah. And the rest would be history. But I think he was afraid of losing the client as well. And maybe a little bit insecure in his services and passing him on to a buyer's agent who has all of those, um, 
you know, they have mortgage brokers, they have pretty much everyone that you need and yeah, maybe one, afraid to lose the client. Yeah. But that's what you've, business, you've got yeah. to, that's why you have referral partners because you, you're serving the client. You, you're Correct. the broker, you do what the broker does. But then when it comes to them being successful with their investments, they talk to a buyer's agent, they use their services. Yeah, 100%. So if, and if I had made the right decision in that second purchase and I used the buyer's agent, I would have stuck with that broker. Yeah. Right? But when I had realized the mistake that was made and when I think about it and I think, wow, when he gave me that, that, that business card after the settlement, it was like, I still think about it. I'm like, you know, it did, it did put me on a journey to listening to stupid amount of content around buyer's agents yeah. and, and what they do and investing. And so I think I would have ended up in the same way, but another reason why I, I do business the way I do, it's just, yeah. Could have could have changed a lot of things for me, but just glad I'm in a position to pass that card over before settlement next time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and look, that's that's a really massive point um, there, because like if you don't know, you don't know, right? And if you know but you don't, at least ask questions about that service, then it's really on you. So yeah, um, yeah, like it it is insurance. It is making sure that you're doing the best that you can with with um, with where you're at and and the knowledge you have at that time. Yeah. So um, you're you're outsourcing like you know expertise really, mm. and you're paying someone that's done it before yeah. several times to yeah. find you that correct a- asset that's that's going to put you in a different position five or ten years from now. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's money well spent. Yeah. Um there's no doubt about that. And in terms of um being easy to sell a house, yeah, I mean in 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 this market, you just got to chuck it on realestate.com and it just goes in a couple of days. That's it. And buying property, you know, you're talking to agents, you're doing the research, yeah, you're looking at numbers. And there's so much to choose from. And someone living exactly in right. Sydney who's a pharmacist Right, they they are trying to look at what's in Brisbane. They've never been there, or they're trying to look at what's in Adelaide. They've never been there. Yeah, and there's hundreds of properties that are on the market. How do you differentiate what's what? Exactly. You know, so right. what are, what are some of the things you look for when you're looking to buy a property for someone? Yeah. Um. So what what I look for is just proximity to um the CBD for one. Um, have they got any massive employment hubs there? Um, what's the lifestyle offering? So do people really want to live there? School catchment areas, are there pre- uh, prestigious schools there? If not, are, are there private schools there, pub- public schools? Um, is the property in a lower socioeconomic area? If it is, is it gentrifying? So are uh, incomes growing in that yeah. area? Uh, vacancy rates as well. Yeah. Um, how, many, uh, how many properties are available for for rent at any given month for example um and is that number decreasing or is that number increasing so yep. then you can kind of get a better understanding if people are wanting to stay in that area or if people are moving out to other areas right yeah um so yeah it's a whole bunch of metrics that paint a picture of that particular suburb you're trying to invest in and another important point is um where or what types of properties do people actually want to reside in? So what's the rental market like? What's popular? Is it a two-bedroom house? Is it a three-bedroom house? Is it a four-bedroom house? So understanding that and purchasing the correct asset for um, longevity, that's really important because there's no point buying a one better in an area whereby the rental market is serving families that want three to four bedroom houses yeah. you know because um that one bedroom house wouldn't be rented as much as those three to four bedroom houses because those houses are uh, really what's hot in that area in that market yeah so um so making sure that you understand the dem the demographic and what people want and um servicing those people correctly mm. So I've seen uh, Window Property Group is going through some growth. You've partnered up with Daniel, got a couple of uh, people under you. So what, what are your what are your plans for this year, mate? Yeah, so um, that is right. Um, the team's getting bigger, um, so that's always good. So um, yeah, we're looking to get into the development space as well. 
there's a massive um, shortage of um, housing across the country, um, hence why, uh, well, it's a massive factor of the current boom right now, um, just simple supply and demand. So we're looking forward to building um, some of these houses to support people too, yep. um, whether it's duplexes or townhouses in um, certain areas, we're looking at that. And just looking to um, help as many people as we can with our buyer's agency and, um, you know, support people in that property buying journey. So we help own occupiers, we help investors as well. So anyone looking to buy out west, we bought a place in Amberville for a uh, client recently. And, um, you know, without us, they wouldn't have found that deal because what happens is that real estate agents are talking to so many buyers at any given time, but... If you stand out and if you make a strong offer, like what I say is, look, um, if my client really likes likes that property, I'll ring up the agent. I'm like, all right, I'm not messing around. Um, we really want this place. What's it going to take? Yeah. And what are your trust account details? And then that throws them off <laughs> because no buyer's asking for trust account details straight away. Yeah. So uh, agents know that we're not playing games. Yeah. So if anyone's on the phone talking about trust account details straight away, then um, it means that you're you're ready to play ball. Yeah. So um yeah so we won that property for that client. Could have easily have gone um above that uh, eight hundred and fifteen mark we picked it up for eas- easily, but yeah. there's been first in best best dressed and consistent. Um, really changes the dynamic of any. Um, com- conversation when it yeah. comes to uh, buying property. Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of pre-approvals and the same thing, they say the same thing every time. It's so hard to get in and, and secure that property. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous, man. There's so much competition and it's almost like they, they advertise the property for a certain price and but as soon as you get them on the phone, they're like, nah, they're expecting office over this and it's yeah. like way higher than they've advertised it for. So they're just exactly baiting right. people in but people go there with the intention to offer under and it's just they just get laughed out of there. Oh, yeah. There's no yeah, point. Yeah, in, especially in this market, making an offer that's below asking wouldn't really serve you well. But if you understand the property that you're buying and the zoning and what can be done, so a lot of people like the, the idea of building another dwelling, so a, a granny flat on their properties, for example, and... A lot of buyers don't know what zonings are mm. and uh, what uh, per- permissible uses are too. Yeah. So your R1, you, you can just have a standard house. Your R2, you can add another dwelling, R3, yeah. medium den- yeah. density, R4, high density, right? Yeah. Um, so a lot of people aren't privy to that. So some people are happy to offer a bit more because they know that they can knock down that house and, and build t- townhouses in. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So um, just having that knowledge and um, bringing up your your local council to confirm mm. these um, things are really important. Good stuff, man. Well, thanks for coming on again. Um, people want to find you. They're, they're, oh, the millions of followers have probably already yeah, got yeah. onto you since the last yeah. episode, mate. But if people yeah. do want to find you and they're watching this for the first time, where do they go? Yeah, so um, you can follow me uh at Window Property Group, so that's the uh, company uh, Instagram, or Owner Sasari, that's my personal Instagram. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook too, so just my first name, last name, you'll find me there. Um, and my number is zero four double two one seven eight three three two. so. Love that, love Feel that. free to send me a text or give me a call. No worries, I'm Jack Foraker from Organic Home Loans. All my details will be in the link in the description. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks guys.